You call yourself a swimmer? How about being a flood? <laughs> Lampos, how are you? Hello boys, today we'll be having body composition assessment and she'll be the assistant to help us. Hi! Question here. What is body composition? Body composition is a method of breaking down the body into its core components. The methods to measure the body composition is based on the number of core components, which are the two compartment model, three compartment model, and the four compartment model. The simplest approach is the two compartment model, separating it into fat mass and fat free mass. What is fat free mass? Fat-free mass can be further separated into lean body tissue mass and bone minerals. So the two-compartment model now becomes a three-compartment model. Oh, lean body tissue mass. It's muscle mass. You are half correct. Lean muscle tissues includes our body water, our organs such as our skins and of course our muscle mass. But when it comes to measurement of body composition in fitness and health settings, we just divide the lean body tissue mass as total body water and proteins. And yes, the proteins are mainly made up from our muscle mass. So now we got four compartments, the fat mass, total body water, protein, and bone minerals. But how do we measure this in our body? Do we need to cut our flesh and send it to the lab for checking? Of course no, silly. One of the easiest ways to measure body composition is through height, weight, length and circumference, which we call an anthropometric test. But through anthropometric test, you can only get limited information which is body mass index BMI, which later on you can know whether you are underweight, normal weight or overweight. But the thing is, it might not be something very accurate because you don't know whether you, your weight comes from fat or muscle. For example, these two men have the same value of BMI, but see how different their body sizes and fat percentage are. For an athlete, you might have overweight BMI due to high muscle mass. That's why it's important to access your body composition for accurate results. Same goes to measuring circumference. These values are for references, but they do not mean definite results. The accuracy of the measurement depends on the person who measures it but good thing to say, it is easy to manage, requiring less skills. It is also a cheap method for people to get an idea of their body composition. But to have a more accurate interpretation, we can do more body composition assessment like measuring our skin fold. In this way, you can get to know the thickness of the fat layers in the body parts. Based on those measurements, you can estimate your body fat percentage using some formulas. Athletes and non-athletes might have some differences in body composition, which is why there are formulas for athlete population and non-athlete population. The skin fold measurement is also a cheap method to carry out, but it requires more skill compared to anthropometric tests. Hey, 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 look! This machine ah, can show my body fat and muscle without pitching me leh. That is because this PIM machine can estimate your body composition through electric current flowing to your body. It even states that whether I have normal muscle mass and fat mass while also giving me some recommendation on how much fat I need to lose or how much muscle I need to gain. Cool! To use this machine, it is better to follow several guidelines to produce more accurate results so that the electric current is not interrupted. Besides that, there are also certain people not suitable to use this machine because the results produced will be very inaccurate. BIA machine is fast and easy for the people who need to be assessed, but it is also expensive and you can get an accurate result when a person's water intake and water loss gets inconsistent or having changes. Apart from that, people also use body density to estimate the body composition through underwater weighing or bot pots. And also some use chemicals to estimate body composition like the hydrometry assessment in which people need to drink certain chemicals and get blood, urine and saliva sample. 
these are less likely to be used because the equipment and ingredients are expensive and it is not so accurate. How about the big machines that scan in the hospitals? In DEXA, CT scan and MRI? Those are super expensive but also super high in accuracy. There are disadvantages like exposure to radiation, have to bear with loud noises when scanning, so it cannot be used so frequently. Hey, 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 see, 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 see. I have the most perfect body composition. I will have the best performance. Hmm, not necessarily. Different spots have different optimal body composition, right? Yes, both of you are partly correct. An increase in muscle mass contributes to strength and power development. Athletes are able to exert more force in a specific period of time. It also increases speed, quickness and agility performance. Additional weight in the form of non-essential fat provides greater resistance to athletic motion which limits endurance, balance, coordination and movement capacity. So great body composition did help in sports performance improvement. But there's no definite value of what is known as a perfect body composition. Some sports require taller height or longer limbs for advantages such as basketball or swimming. Some requires athletes to be large in stature, mass or both. Whereas some athletes prosper when they are small in stature. For example, strength and power athletes benefit greatly from higher levels of lean body mass. Endurance athletes benefit greatly from having low percentage of body fat. Gymnasts, pole vaulters and high jumpers have to overcome their body weights to obtain athletic success. Thus, minimizing changes in mass enables greater flight height, time and flexibility plus agility on air. For swimming, although body fat may help in buoyancy, having higher mass means having more weight carried by the athletes causing the athletes to swim slower. Hence, swimmers also need a low percentage of body fat to maintain good body fitness. Now I understand. Like I am a spring swimmer and I will need high muscle mass for giving me the boost in the game. So, moral of the story, keep our body low in fat but essential for our body to function, then keep our body high in muscle mass but keeping them not too bulky for the sports needed with consistent agility and flexibility is the key of suitable body composition. Good body composition helps in sports performance, but we still need the motor skills and techniques to be a good athlete.